guys so this video has been so highly requested and i've probably filmed it like 10 times already and i keep hating the footage so i just don't edit it or upload it but it's all about my breastfeeding journey and whoa oh. <laughs> i said let's start over so last time i talked about the breastfeeding journey i said that i'll post a video once i'm done with breastfeeding so landon just turned a year old like two weeks ago now or yeah about two weeks ago now and we're still breastfeeding um he is now drinking cow's milk um but i'm still allowing him to have the breast as much as he wants just because i want him to stop when he wants to stop i have been giving him a little bit of cow's milk in the daytime um but there's a lot of the times where he'll drink the cow's milk and he'll put it to the side and ask for the boob um, and his way of asking for the boob is pointing to my boob or he'll literally lift off my shirt and I just give it to him because I want him to still feel comfortable with wanting it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him still breastfeeding after a year old. Let's go back all the way from the beginning. I'm gonna talk about my whole journey thus far. Then I'm also gonna give some tips and tricks that I have found that's really helped me with my breastfeeding journey. So I always knew I wanted to breastfeed. I always said, I'm like, no matter what, I wanna breastfeed for the first year, I wanna breastfeed for the first year. I never realized how hard breastfeeding was, and that's one thing that no one has ever informed me. I never really asked questions because I don't really know anyone that's breastfed their babies for almost a year. So I had to do a lot of research, and I never really did a lot of research until after I had Landon, which was my first mistake. Um, I know that there is like lactation classes that you can take prior to baby and I never thought I needed to take that and I probably should have because I remember when they asked me when I went to get induced they said do you want a breastfeed for my charts sorry if you can hear Landon in the background he's eating lunch across from me so I said yes I plan on breastfeeding so that they knew whether to give me formula or to allow me to breastfeed after I had Landon probably like within 30 minutes they're like okay did you want to try breastfeeding and I said yes I literally didn't realize I had to latch him onto me. I thought it would just be natural for him, but I mean, obviously his baby doesn't really know. He was showing signs that he wanted to nurse. He was like opening up his mouth. And... So I didn't know better and I literally was just like, here you go, like just trying to shove my nipple in his mouth. We're gonna get real personal now. I had very flat nipples. Like I didn't have, like my nipples weren't like, point. my nipples didn't point out. I don't know what the correct term for that. But I have very flat nipples. Even when I used to have my nipples pierced, they were still, like pretty flat almost. I had a little bit more of like a bump where my nipple was because of my nipple rings, but they were pretty flat. TMI, whatever you need to know. So it's a little harder for to nurse at first if you if your nipples are pretty flat because it doesn't hit the roof of their mouth as easily, I guess it is, um, whatever. So I didn't really know better, so I'm just trying to like pop my whole boob in his mouth without realizing that there's an actual technique to get it into his mouth and helping him latch on. I had no clue. We were in the hospital, I was gonna say three. We were in the hospital for two days and I cried every single day, all day long, cause I couldn't latch him onto me. Um, he was a very lazy eater as well. So he would nurse for like a few seconds and then come off and then wake up like again and want to nurse. And it was exhausting cause he would just fall asleep on the breast eventually. So the whole time I was at the hospital, every time I had to feed Landon, I would have to call one of the nurses in to help me latch him onto me because I had no idea what I was doing. I could not latch him onto me no matter how hard I tried. And then he was getting frustrated because he wanted to nurse and I couldn't get him on me. Um, so when Landon was born, Landon was six pounds, six ounces, and he dropped down to five pounds, six ounces, I believe was what it was. Uh, his last check-in before he started gaining the weight. Um, and I was nervous. I remember the last night that we spent there, that whole night I cried and I told Cameron, I was like, I can't go home. I cannot go home. Um, he's losing weight. He's not eating. I don't know how to nurse him. I'm gonna have to go to formula. And I was devastated because when you're first trying to breastfeed and you can't breastfeed, it's almost like discouraging because you're like, this is something that's supposed to be natural. Why isn't it coming natural to me? And it's because everything's a learning process and I'm getting chills thinking about it. But Everything's a learning process with being a mother or just being an adult in period. Um, everything you need to learn. Um, and I really encourage if you don't know how to breastfeed or you've never breastfed, take a class. It helps so much. Um, 
But basically, I ended up really getting him to kind of latch on and really the only way I got him to really feed was if I held him across my belly and kind of just like held, like held him that way to nurse. I tried so many different positions and that's the only position until this day that's the still position that he prefers to breastfeed. Um, but I saw a lactation consultant, I think three times while I was at the hospital that they would come in and help me and kind of show me a way to help, um, hand express and kind of a way to really like get my nipple into his mouth and it really helped. So the day that they sent me home, they knew I felt so uncomfortable with the fact of bringing him home. Um, and basically what they did was they told me to come in the next day for a lactation consultant appointment. And so I did, I was like, yes, that'll make me feel so much better. Kind of learn a little bit more. And it's kind of more like hands-on, just me and the lactation consultant compared to me and the doctors and the nurses and all these people coming in. So we did, we went home. I was able to latch him, but not really. It was kind of a really rough night. The first night was a rough night. Um, but the next day we had a lactation consultant appointment and then we were there, we got to weigh him, feed him, weigh him. And they said the same thing, like he's a lazy eater. Like he's very lazy. Um, and he would just fall asleep right on the breast. So then we had to really start tickling him and like kind of like rubbing on him to kind of like keep him awake because he would just fall right asleep as soon as he hit the breast. So while I was at that appointment, they also told me to go get my pump. Uh, because I had Landon three weeks early, usually at the 37 week mark, they will prescribe you your pump if you have TRICARE. Um, and it's for free with TRICARE. So I never got to order my pump because they just prescribed it and I literally had land in like three days later. So um, I got my pump that day. They said start pumping and then uh, finger feeding him. And that way I'll kind of teach him to suck onto the nipple um, compared to just giving them a bottle so young. So we did, I would have to literally strap, well Cameron actually did it. So I would feed him and then after I fed him, I would pump and then whatever extra I would pump, Cameron would tie um, the tube to his pinky because it was small. And then we would take a syringe with the breast milk and we would slowly feed him that way to help kind of him gain the weight because he did have jaundice, actually pretty bad. Um, but we just passed it enough that they, laid us, that they let us go home. So we did that for a while, the finger feeding, we would nurse and then feed him that way to help get him that extra breast milk. So at his one week checkup, we noticed that he was actually losing weight and his jaundice levels were still pretty high. So we had to continue going to these appointments every day to weigh him in and see where we were at. And at that point, we actually almost had to get readmitted for the jaundice and he wasn't gaining weight. Um, so we had to give him formula. So. And the reason why we had to give him formula was so that way we did not have to get readmitted. And he's had one bottle of formula, I'm lying. Yeah, he's had one bottle of the infant pre-made formula his whole life. Um, and that was to help him gain weight. And I'm glad that we did do it because if we did it, we would have had to get readmitted and yeah, so he did have formula. Beginning of our breastfeeding journey was very difficult. I cried every single day, all day long, because I didn't know what was gonna happen. And I thought after giving him that one thing of formula, so after giving him that one, like that one bottle of formula, I literally bawled my eyes out because I was like, I, I won't, I'm not gonna be able to continue. Like, he downed the whole thing of formula, and he loved it. And I was just like, oh my god, he doesn't like my milk. He prefers formula. For a little bit there, I was like. I'm gonna have to do formula, I'm gonna have to do what's best for my baby, and that's just what it is. And I was devastated at first, because I was like, I really want to breastfeed. And then I was like, you know what? No, I'm doing this, I'm going to do it. And I pumped, and I nursed, and I pumped, and I nursed, and I pumped, and I nursed, and I literally, all I felt like I had was my boobs were hanging out like the first like two months, and all I did was have a baby attached to me or a pump attached to me. And I tried to get my milk up, and I tried to nurse him as much as I possible, and We've made it, we made it over a year now and I'm getting chills because I'm so excited because I literally had so many times throughout my journey, which I'll get into as well, that I literally wanted to give up. And the biggest thing I can tell anybody that's breastfeeding and wants to continue breastfeeding is do not give up. The worst thing you can do is to give up because it's very easy to stop producing milk, but it's not as easy to continue. Yeah, don't do not give up. I had a rough start, um, but we made it and you can too. So like I said before, is I did so much research. I can't tell you, I was constantly reading so many articles, so many videos. I was reading so many blog posts. Um, 
anything I could get my hands on about breastfeeding, I was reading because like I said, I didn't know anybody that was breastfeeding. I didn't have any friends that were breast that breastfed or breastfeeding. A lot of my friends that did breastfed, they stopped because something happened or they just gave up. I don't know. I have some friends that never wanted to breastfeed, which is okay too. I mean, I have always wanted to breastfeed. So I have always wanted to breastfeed. So for me, like I knew I got to take out my nipple rings. I got to like let my boobies be milk because that's what, I mean, that's what boobs are for. That's why God gave us boobs was to breastfeed. That's why we are able to produce milk is to feed our children. That's why cows are able to feed their babies. That's why like any animal is able to feed their babies because that's what we're made for. But nothing's wrong with formula either. Like, I mean, it, like I always think about it. Like if my next baby literally can't latch or has any kind of issues, then I'm gonna do what's best for my baby. If it's best to feed my baby formula and make sure she's or he's gaining weight or healthy, then I'm gonna do what's best for my baby. So I, and I'm not opposed to formula at all. Um, like, I'm not. I would do it in a heartbeat if I had to. Um, but I knew I was able and I was capable of producing and continuing as long as I wanted to put in the work. I'm lucky that I'm home three days out of the seven days of the week. Um, what? I'm lucky that I'm home five out of the seven days of the week. I go into the office twice a week and I struggled a lot on those days that I went into the office with my milk, but I had pumped milk and I was able to come home my lunch break and I was able to pump at work or come home for pump, whatever the case may be. I was able to do it where there are some jobs out there that it's hard to get away to pump or I don't know, you just, it's just too much because it is a lot of work to pump at work and everything or go out and pump. But I'm lucky enough that I have a job and I'm, I was able to because I say if I had a full time job in an office, I don't know if I would be able to continue breastfeeding as long as I have because it's a lot of work. It really is. And that's one thing I never knew about breastfeeding was how much work it would be. I thought because it was a natural thing that it would be so easy. It's not, it's not. There was a few times where I've questioned my supply for sure and I would cry about it. And those times were usually when Lana was going through growth spurts. So when a baby goes through a growth spurt, they have a few, especially at the beginning, those like first three months, they have so many growth spurts because they grow so quickly those first three months. On the growth spurts, they crave more breast milk. So I don't know if it's the same way with formula, but I know it is with breastfed babies that they tend to cluster feed. And when they cluster feed, it's because they're going through growth spurts. So you can have a time where your baby could be nursing for like two hours straight, almost. And then they'll come off and then they'll want to nurse again. And at the beginning, everyone's like, oh, you're going to overfeed that baby. You're going to get that baby fat. You're, you're, you're overfeeding. You're overfeeding. And it's like, you cannot overfeed a breastfed baby. They know when they're done. Um, so my biggest thing is let them nurse. So sometimes when a baby's cluster feeding as well, or the baby constantly wants to nurse, it's because that baby's trying to get that milk production going. So when your boobs, when your, so when your breasts are empty, that's when your milk production comes back. So the more that it's empty, the more milk that comes back. Let me get my baby. Little one just finished lunch and apparently wants to be on camera now, huh? <laughs> um, Apparently he wants the breast. Um, I tried giving him cow's milk and he, want, he threw it at me. So apparently he wants some milk. I tried giving him the bottle and he threw it at me. So he wanted the boob. <laughs> so I'm gonna let him have it. Um, yeah. So now that we're back, the more the baby nurses, the more it's trying to tell your body to make more milk. So usually when a baby wants to cluster feed, people confuse that with they have a low production of milk. And that's not the case. So what the case is, is that the baby's trying to make you have more milk to reach their needs, if that makes any sense at all. I hope it does, because that's what they're trying to do. Sometimes babies just feed for comfort, and that's okay too, because, I mean, you are a pacifier. I also allowed Lynn to have a pacifier when I knew he was using me as a pacifier, and he took to the pacifier just fine, and he doesn't even need the pacifier. He, he uses it once in a while, but he never uses it really. Um, but yeah, cluster feeding, Totally normal, your milk production's fine. A lot of people also feel like sometimes they'll, you, you feed your baby and then you pump. So sometimes people feel like when they're pumping after they feed the baby and they don't have enough milk, they're like, I'm not producing enough. 
and you're producing just enough. The extra milk that you pump after you have nursed your baby, that's just extra milk. Your baby already took his intake of what he needs. So that extra is what you save up to freeze your stash or in case your baby gets sick or just, you know, have a backup supply. But as long as that baby's fed and he's having wet diapers, um, he's nursing and having wet diapers, then he's, he's fine or she's fine. Um, that was my biggest worry was I'm like, oh, how do I know if he's eating enough? And the doctor said as long as he has wet diapers, he's okay. So that's another thing too, is that, um, remember, cause I always just get so defeated when I would see my milk and only see a little bit of milk, like two ounces. I'm like, oh, I only made two ounces. He's supposed to be having like six ounces. And I'd be like, oh, I'm not pumping enough, but I'm pumping just in, fine. It's just, that's just the extra milk. So. What you wanna kinda, I, so another thing is too, is I have an oversupply. Um, and I didn't always have an oversupply, but I would always pump, feed, pump, feed, pump, feed. And I guess just me being me, naturally, I have an oversupply. So one thing I started doing when Landon was like two to three months old um, was I ordered from Milky Mama, which is an amazing company. They're actually based in California, I believe. Um, and they make lactation treats and supplements and all that kind of goodness. And I ordered from them and the cookies and brownies are delicious and they work instantly. Like I'm talking instantly. Like I would eat a brownie and I would notice in like an hour that my boobs just were like full and they hurt and I needed to nurse her pump and I would pump so much extra milk. So with that being said, um, there's nothing wrong with lactation treats. Sometimes lactation trees is just helping your body produce more because you're giving your body exactly what it needs. So when you're breastfeeding, it needs a ton of water. It needs certain like, um, I don't know the words, um, not nutrients, but like certain things to help create milk. I don't know, but like you want to eat lots of oatmeal and like oats and that kind of stuff. So yeah, Milky Mama is bomb. Lactation drinks too, coconut water, um, there's teas. Um, I'll show you guys at the end a bunch of things that I have that I've used and I loved. I don't have anything from Milky Mama because I haven't purchased from them in so long because I just don't. Um, also another thing is Pinterest. I have Pinterest so many smoothies and um, like cookie, like lactation cookies and lactation brownies and like lactation muffins and Pinterest has so many things that you can make right at home that's really inexpensive. But if you're on the go and you don't have time, Milky Mama is so good. It's kind of pricey, but well worth it. There's a ton of different treats. I literally would eat these cookies and these drinks and all the time. And I've also taken a lot of like supplements to help with my production as well. Now, I haven't taken anything in probably a good three months just because now I just kind of nurse whenever Landon wants and I've been produce, producing enough, but I haven't pumped and stored milk in probably six months. And the reason for that is I am pretty much always home. So Landon always is able to have my breast whenever he needs it. Um, so I haven't really needed a freezer stash anymore. Um, so we've gone through the freezer stash. There's no more freezer stash. We don't pump anything. We don't pump anything extra anymore. So yeah, I, don't pump anymore. Um, there's been a few times recently where I have had to pump just because Landon isn't nursing as often and just to kind of relieve the pressure because it hurts so bad. Um, there's been a few times where if it hurts so bad, I'll ask him, like, hey, do you want some milk? And he'll be like, and he'll come over to me and kind of help relieve me. But if he doesn't want it, then I'm not gonna force him to drink it. I'll just pump it out. Um, <laughs> yes, you're just playing. Land is just playing in the corner. He's so cute. Yeah. Uh. Um, but yeah, I don't pump anymore. And that's a personal preference. There's some people that need to continue pumping. And you need to pump if you're working or, you know what I mean? If you're at work and you need to pump to help store, that kind of ish, you're going to need to keep pumping. But since I'm pretty much always home and I'm able to come home on my lunch break, um, on the days I go to the office, I don't need to pump really anymore. Um, so I don't really pump anymore. So I don't really feel the need to have any lactation drinks to help with my supply because what I have is enough. And especially now that he is getting a little bit of cow's milk, I definitely have way more milk in me than he needs. So we kind of just let it go. And 
now my body, I think my body's kind of like learning that it needs less milk too. So that's kind of cool, but it kind of still hurts. I'm still going through pain of like when I need to nurse him and he doesn't want to nurse. I'm like, ah, this hurts. But he nurses first thing in the morning. He nurses first thing in the morning and then right before bed. And then he nurses probably two, maybe three times throughout the day. Kind of just depends. Sometimes he'll drink the cow's milk in the day. So he'll only nurse like once in the day, but more than likely, I, I would say he nurses at least four times a day still. Um, so yeah, I think I got all of that out of the way. I just want to say my breastfeeding journey has not been easy. There's definitely been more hiccups in it than I'm probably talking about just because I mean, it's been a whole year. So it's kind of hard to remember everything, but I have a ton of you guys that message me all the time on Instagram about breastfeeding and I am more than open anytime any of you guys do have a question. So I have a lot of people that reach out to me regarding it. And if you really do ever have a question, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm not a lactation consultant. I'm not a specialist. I am not a pro, but I can give you my personal opinion on things. And I can kind of like give you advice on kind of what happened to me or like what I've been through to help you out. Um, but yeah, I'm always open to talking to anybody. Um, yeah, let me show you guys some things that I've used while breastfeeding. So one thing I just realized I forgot to talk about was my supply when I got my period back. So I have an IUD. So I have the copper IUD, so I'm not sure the correct term for it, but it makes you get your period. Um, I had the Marina put in, I had a bad allergic reaction to it. I had to get it removed. And then I got the copper IUD put in, but this one makes you get your period. So I started getting my period. I get my period every month now. Um, and when I get my period, my milk plummets. It doesn't drop, it plummets. And it's scary um, when it plummets, but when it usually when I'm on my period, um, I take the calcium, magnesium, and zinc. Um, and I take this. I mean, this is good to take anytime. But when you're on your period, I read a lot that this is actually what helps. And this is actually my second bottle that's unopened. I don't know what happened to my first one. I think it's still in the, in the cabinet. But this helps a lot when you're on your period. So if you're on your period and you're seeing a decrease, try the calcium, magnesium, zinc. Um, this helps a lot. Um, and I used, to, I used to cry when I got my period. I'm like, oh my God, my milk's not coming in. And that's because my period was coming or I was on my period. So yeah, this is awesome. Um, another thing I used to take was the Mother's Love More Milk Plus um, Herbal supp Supplement. It looks like this. These taste disgusting, but they work. Um, I am bad. I didn't take this every day, but usually like around my period or when I really feel like a decrease in my milk, I would take this twice a day. It said, it's recommended, I think four, but it used to make me feel kind of queasy. I used to feel queasy all the time just because I never used to eat enough. The next thing is tea. Um, I don't really like these teas, but if you mix them with lemonade and you put them in the fridge, you let them kind of sit, um, they don't taste that bad. Uh, but yeah, this one is the Pink Stork Liquid Gold Nursing Mother's Tea. Pro promotes milk production, promotes milk flow, delicious hot or cold. So it looks like this, and they're just little tea bags. And I actually have a few left in here. I'm actually probably gonna ask my friend Alex, once I'm done with this video, if she wants any of this, because like I said, I don't really need it anymore, and I don't want it to go bad, and she's still breastfeeding. This one I have is this organic mother's milk. Um, it looks like this. It's from traditional medicinals, medicinals, medicinals. I don't know. Uh, uh, but yeah, these are what these look like. Mm. Just like a bunch of herbs and stuff. And I mean, I'm just, I just really don't like the taste of these. I, I don't. I like Earl's Grey or black tea, green tea. I don't like these. But like I said, mix with a little bit of lemonade. It's actually not that bad. Um, so yeah, I would drink those, um, depending on how I felt, I would probably drink one of these once a night, um, maybe every other night, depending on how my flow was. So another thing, now we're going to continue talking about drinks, is these, um, Upspring Milk Flow. Ooh, okay, close it. These. This one I've gone through so many boxes of. I love this drink. Um, it's a chocolate flavored. It's a breastfeeding supplement. It's fennel Greek and with blessed Thistle, I believe that's how you say it. Uh, this one's chocolate. It says you can enjoy it hot or cold. This tastes like hot chocolate. Like straight up hot chocolate. 
Um, when I used to go to work on Mondays and Tuesdays, I would drink these just because I feel like my supply would get a lot um, more with these. But yeah, these I love. I've gone through so many boxes of them. This one is the berry flavored, and it's only you're only supposed to drink this one cold, and it's all right. It don't taste that good. I'm not gonna lie. I only have only have four left. They're not my cup of tea. I'm not a big berry person in any kind of berry drink, so they're okay. But like I said, I would see a huge difference with the Upspring Milk Flow, that brand, amazing. Um, Milky Mama has a lemonade, so good, so good. And I would see a huge difference with that one too. Um, and then they have the cookies. The Milky Mama also has the cookies and then the brownies. And then they also have emergency brownies, which those emergency brownies, you're supposed to eat them and it's like instant milk flow. Brownies and the regular cookies. And they're so good, you guys have to try them. Another thing I got from Milky Mama, which I still have, is the Dairy Duchess Daily Su Diet Dietary Supplement, I should say. Um, these, you just put a few of them underneath your tongue or you can put it into water and drink it as well. Um, I This is like $25 and I bought it and I mean, I've seen a difference, but not like a huge difference, so I kind of just stopped. Um, but this has like everything that you need for breastfeeding. Like it has like the fennel, marshmallow root, goat's root, alpha, alpha, alfalfa, I think. Um, but it has like everything that's kind of like good and helps promote milk flow. So this is awesome. I just didn't really see a huge difference um, from when I would take it when I didn't take it. Last thing I have are these booby boons lactation cookies. These are in chocolate chip. I got these from Target. Um, they taste kind of poopy. They don't taste that great. Um, they're very like hard um, and they kind of taste like a healthy cookie. So it has an acquired taste, but they work amazingly. Um, I noticed a huge difference when I would eat these too. But yeah, I always used to make lactation cookies, brownies, um, lactation muffins, everything from home. Lactation smoothies I would always make at home too. I would always eat some oatmeal. I drank a ton of water. You have to drink a lot of water in order to produce milk um, because your milk needs to produce out of something. Um, so lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of water. It's like a crazy the amount of water I used to drink. The thing is brewer's yeast. I used to add this into everything, into my oatmeal, my smoothies, my brownies, my cookies, anything I could. This is amazing. This is actually for like vegetarians and stuff. It's a supplement. It actually says suitable for vegetarians. Um, it's all like everything you need. Um, all like the vitamins and everything. So this helps you with your milk flow as well. So yeah, I don't think I have anything else. Um, I did get a few questions from people. A lot of the questions were how do you keep going when you feel defeated? And my biggest thing is just keep going. If you want to breastfeed and you want to hit a certain goal, keep going, it gets better. Um, but for sure, breastfeeding um, isn't for everybody. Um, and I try to tell that to everybody that has, or I try to tell that everyone that wants to breastfeed or is going to breastfeed or is breastfeeding, it's not for everybody and that's okay. Um, as long as your baby's fed, that's what's most important. Uh, but if you're feeling defeated or if you're having really hard times, just know it does get better. Uh, the biggest thing for me that I felt when I was breastfeeding and I wanted to just give up all the time, the biggest thing I had to keep telling myself was, this is what's best for him. Um, this is what he enjoys. Um, that I'm almost there. I would kind of try to be as encouraging as I could because it is exhausting. It is tiring. It is you get to a point where you just want your body to be your own again. And as selfish as that may sound, you, sh you, you carried a baby for 10 months. You now have a baby nursing. And it's kind of like, you just want your body to feel your own again. And that's totally normal. And I used to have that problem all the time. Like, I just want my body to be my own again. But now I'm like, Lynn is still nursing. And sometimes I'm like, I want to be done. But then other times I'm like, he still wants it. He still needs it. So let him have it. Um, and I try to always think that they're only little for so long that it's going to fly by and it's going to be done and then you're going to look back and you're going to miss it. And sometimes I do miss when he would nurse when he was little, little. And 
kind of just like look up at me. Yeah. Honestly, it goes by so fast. Um, I'm gonna cry thinking about it. But there are so many times I'm like, oh, I can't wait to hit the 12 months and then I'm done. And now I'm like, I'm at 12 months and I'm like, I don't know if I am done. Like, And like I said, I do give him cow's milk, but sometimes I'm like, I kind of want him to like nurse, but I'm not gonna force it on him. And there has been times I'm like, do you want milk, like mommy's milk? And he doesn't want it. And I'm like, that's okay too, you know? But yeah, I think I rambled enough. I probably got like 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes of footage. Ooh, I'm gonna have to cut this down. But yeah, a lot of the questions were basically about treats, how I keep going, supplements, and then um, if I'm still breastfeeding. But yeah, so I am still breastfeeding. I told you guys all the supplements. Um, just keep pushing through. If you want it, you can do it. If you want to breastfeed, you just keep just keep going. Um, but also remember that it's okay if you need to supplement or it's okay if you have to get them formula. I think that's the biggest thing that you start to get mom guilt because you want, everyone puts this picture of breastfeeding is what you're supposed to do. Breastfeeding is the best for the baby. And at the end of the day, formula is just as good. You know what I mean? It's gonna give them just what they need. And it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Um, I'm thankful enough that I pushed through and I made it my I made my goal of one year and I'm glad that we're still going and I plan on still going until he's done um and I know that there's gonna be the day where he's not gonna ask for the milk at all and I'll probably cry <laughs> but I know it's what's gonna be best for us and what's gonna be best for him um and I'm grateful that I have been able to breastfeed even though you know your boobs start to change while you're breastfeeding because you have these huge boobs at first. They're beautiful, they're perky, they're big. And then they slowly just start to deflate. And that's fun. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm just gonna keep railing. I can literally talk about this topic forever. So yeah, I'm gonna leave my Instagram down below. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or you wanna talk further. Or if you literally just wanna talk about breastfeeding, I'm always open. It's like probably one of my favorite topics now that I am a mom and I have been breastfeeding. Like I love talking about breastfeeding. Um, just because I love helping others, such because I didn't know I didn't have anyone to talk to. So if you want to talk about breastfeeding, feel free to message me or DM me. Feel free to email me if you want. But I mean, DM's kind of a little quicker because I usually reply those like on the spot. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're breastfeeding, you got this. If you plan on breastfeeding, you definitely got this. Breastfed and it didn't work out for you. Just think about the time that you were able to breastfeed and how great that was then. Don't beat yourself up over it. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I don't post all the time, but I post kind of often. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.